Everyone, we're all set. Can you start the screen? Think we're good to go, John? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, I'll certainly call the meeting to order and thank you for your patience, uh, in particular our delegations here this evening. Uh, but first, uh, before we proceed, uh, I would like to also uh, report out that we uh, had a closed meeting that was convened in a closed session at 4 p.m. in accordance to section 239.2 C, D, H, I, J, and K of the Municipal Act uh, 2001, which permits a meeting to be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered is proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality, labor relations, uh, or employee negotiations, <clears throat> excuse me, information explicitly supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board by Canada, a province or territory or a crown agency of any of them, a trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, financial, or labor relations information supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board, which is disclosed, could reasonably be expected to prejudice significantly the competitive position or interfere significantly with the contractual or other negotiations of a person, group of persons, or organization. Trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, or financial information that belongs to the municipality or local board as a monetary value or potential monetary value or a position plan procedure criteria or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board. So at the meeting administration was given direction on contract negotiations with the Tecumseh Firefighters Association uh, in temporary positions. Administration all provided council with an update on pot uh, potential land acquisition. So to that, uh, members of uh, council, any disclosure of pecuniary interest on the agenda is presented to you. Okay, none, we'll have that duly noted. And if you do find yourself in a conflict uh, position, please uh, notify uh, the chair. Introduction and uh, certainly the purpose of our meeting uh, is to hear public comment on behalf of the County of Essex on an application for approval of a plan of subdivision situated on the northeast corner of North Talbot Road uh, at the 8th Concession Road intersection. The applicant, Old Castle Heights Inc., is proposing uh, a, to the creation of a residential subdivision consisting of a total of 157 blocks uh, and lots. I call upon our manager of planning services, uh, if uh, you may, please to summarize the report and the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of council. Uh, attachment one of the report, please. So the, the subject 20.8 hectare parcel of land is situated on the, the northeast corner of the intersection of 8th and Session Road and North Talbot Road. It's vacant. Um, council will recall that back in 2016, there was an industrial proposal for the site uh, the official plan and zoning bylaw amendments of which were uh, appealed by a local residence group called the Food Group or the Friends of Old Castle Development. Um, in 2018, the, the Ontario Municipal Board upheld that appeal and directed that the, the previous owner of the site, along with the Food Group and uh, Town Administration, uh, develop an, uh, an alternative residential slash commercial development scenario for the site. And if you turn to attachment two, you'll see what that scenario looked like. And it's important because um, it, it's what brought us to this point today. We're reviewing this plan of subdivision on behalf of the, of the, the county. The development scenario here is, includes approximately 20.5 hectares of residential land, which you see in yellow. Um, the area outlined in blue was for a stormwater management facility. And then there are corridors leading from that for stormwater conveyance. The green strip to the west of the site, adjacent 8th Concession Road, was meant to be a 30 meter uh, buffer that mitigated any potential negative impacts from the, or the industrial development on the west side of 8th Concession Road from the sensitive residential uh, land uses. Um, and then <clears throat> there was also a 0.75 hectare commercial block 
at the northeast corner of the 8th Concession Road and North Talbot Road intersection. Uh, and then finally, uh, another significant feature of that concept was a multi-purpose pathway that um, went around the entirety of the property, uh, providing for linkages to uh, Weston Park to the, to the east in the future. The OMB um, approved the official plan and zoning bylaw amendments that, uh, in, in, that introduced site-specific policies that reflected this scenario. And I should add that this scenario went out for public comment um, and, and was developed in conjunction with the community at the time. Uh, which brings us uh, to today, the current landowner, and if, if you can turn it to attachment three, uh, current landowner, Old Castle Heights Incorporated, who is represented by Abdul Habib, who is the owner uh, here tonight, as well as his planning consultant, Tiziano Zaghi, um, are proposing the development of the site with a, a sub plan of subdivision in two phases, with the, the westerly portion um, including 152 units in total, uh, comprising 64 detached units, 12 semi-detached units, and 76 attached or townhouse style units, along with uh, blocks for buffer area, uh, passive open space, the multi-purpose pathway, and st the stormwater management pond and corridors leading to it. The second phase, which occupies the easterly portion of the subject property, um, includes the development of the balance of the lots, uh, and they total 68 lots for single unit uh, detached dwellings, uh, which brings the entirety of the development to 220 units. Um, and attachment four clearly illustrates the concept. Um, you can see in yellow, uh, that's the single unit detached dwelling lots. They have a minimum frontage of 15.24 meters or roughly 50 feet. Uh, and they're approximately 5,700 to 6,000 square feet in area. The light uh, orange lots well, at the um, west of the limit of the property adjacent, the, uh, the uh, buffer area are for semi-detached blocks or six semi-detached blocks, so 12 units in total. And then the dark orange represent the townhouse blocks and there are 19 of those. So these future units will front on new municipal roads that have five points of access along the North Talbot Road. Um, and I should add that what you see here is the right of way limit, and not the travel portion of the road or the sidewalks or any of the features within the right of way, but the, the right of way, which is roughly 20 meters wide. Uh, within that, there will be sidewalks on both sides of the, of this, of the street, street trees in the boulevard. Um, and this will all lead to the multi-purpose pathway, which you see around the perimeter in accordance with the concept plan that was approved by the board. Uh, there is a bit of a gap at the southeasterly um, portion of the subject property, but the intent is that that will be connected ultimately to the stormwater feature, which is going to act as an amenity for the site uh, and to uh, Weston Park to the east at some point. It wasn't identified because there's a, a conservation boundary that's delineated within that green area. Uh, and it's not clear how close we can get to, to that with the, with the uh, trail at this time. So it might have to go through uh, Street A and Street C, just like it's doing at the north where it comes from the, uh, the, the green corridor into the development and forms part of the right of way. Um, the development will be on full municipal services. And um, all of these features will be secured through uh, a detailed development agreement that council will have to approve prior to any development proceeding. The subject property is part of a settlement area in the context of the provincial policy statement and the county official plan. And it includes a, a range and mix of housing types, which is something that's encouraged by those documents. The Tecumseh official plan designates the site residential um, with site specific policies that were approved by the board back in 2019, ultimately. Uh, and the zone, the zoning that applies to the property is a residential to HR2-4, which is a holding zone category, uh, and a holding parks and open space HP-5. And the, the P-5 zone pertains to the buffer area along the 8th Concession Road. The lots that are being proposed through this draft plan uh, meet the minimum lot frontage and area requirements of that zone. Uh, the Planning Act also establishes that there are matters uh, that Council has to have regard to when reviewing these subdivisions, and they're under 5124, and there's too many to name, and, and, and 
in the interest of saving some time, I'm not going to go through them all, but they deal with conformity to the official plan, the suitability of the site, the um, number, width, and location of the, the highways or the roadways within the development and adjacent to it, the dimensions and shapes of the lots. And there's a few other criteria that we have to have regard to. And administration has reviewed the proposed plan against those criteria, and we're satisfied that proper regard has been given to 5124 of the Act. As noted earlier, the County of Essex is the approval authority, um, and we're holding this public meeting on its behalf. The county engages with other external agencies and addresses any issues that come up through that, uh, that process through conditions of draft approval. So based on addressing any issues that come forward tonight, um, administration recommends that the that town council support this draft plan of subdivision and we provide the following conditions to the County of, uh, of Essex. And I will just, I'll summarize those conditions again in the interest of time, um, that the owner enter into a development agreement with the town, addressing town requirements related to design, engineering, financial, and other matters, uh, that the owner engage the services of a qualified engineer to do a stormwater management study addressing quality and quantity to the satisfaction of IRCA and the town. And that's another standard condition that we provide to the county on plans of subdivision. What's unique about the one that we're recommending tonight is that the stormwater management study also has to address stormwater conveyance from the commercial block, which I should have added that was severed from the balance of the subject property back in 2019. So it's under separate ownership, um, but the stormwater study for this plan of subdivision will have to address stormwater conveyance from that block. Uh, and then finally, prior to final approval by the approval authority, um, the county is to be advised by the town that the proposed subdivision conforms to the zoning bylaw in effect. Uh, so those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, the council may have or that uh, the residents or interested stakeholders uh, may have tonight. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jeffrey, for uh, your presentation. Um, so uh, at this stage here, we'll, uh, we'll go to delegations. Uh, and uh, first uh, uh, is Mr. Uh, uh, Abdul Habib, the owner and uh, and certainly an applicant, and uh, also uh, Zach Habib, the applicant representative, and uh, Tiziano uh, Zaghi, the applicant's planner. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Councilor, Engineer, and everyone, please. Do you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining us at this meeting. My name is Abdul Habib the owner of this property at the corner of North Talbot and Eight Concession Road. With me today, Tiziano Yagi, our planner, and Zach Habib is my partner, who can also answer any future question that might be later on. I would like to mention this privilege. It has been a building within Windsor and town and city of Ontario. And I would thank all of my clients for their support. Within Old Castle, I truly believe this location is of the subdivision will bring and joy to many families that wish to raise it in beautiful Old Castle Height. This land constant of different verification of build a lot and including two story homes and raise ranches home and ranch home for all different people with many big built family homes. This subdivision is suitable for young family and middle age and older couple to enjoy living in your town and in this subdivision of Old Castle Heights. The square footage of this area is to be from 1,400 square feet of full multi multi-family ranch homes and up to 3,600 square feet of two-story homes with nice green landscape and many different size of custom homes. Homes will be a full track. Home, home will be full brick and stucco exterior, which is a good quality and very good quality, I believe. And links is what we will be like to build. And this will be of the same. And a closing statement, thank you for everyone. And I will, I will be available to answer any question at this come when it comes. Thank you very much for your support. Great, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Habib, for your opening comments. 
Uh, is there any questions uh, to uh, the proponents uh, from members of council at this stage? Yes, uh, Councilor Jobin. Yes. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Habib, um, for your presentation this evening. I just you said uh, there will be some custom homes, so there is a variety of lot sizes. So all the houses are you saying won't be cookie cut and the exact same, or there will be an option for maybe a ranch style and then a two story or a variation when you say custom. Thank you very much for your question, ma'am. It's. Um... We have set the blocks, as Jeff was saying in the plan, blocks for semi-detached, which is will be 12. And then we also set section of ranch houses, multifamily for the elderly. And, and also we set the block for two story of, uh, uh, like a two story of four bedrooms each and whatever for mid-age or younger family. Okay, and the plus we set the site of many different uh, homes that, we build them accordingly to the customer wishes. So we set some to be built the way we think is suitable to the subdivision, but we also left many, many different lots that we built according to people wish. That's been our building process so far for those years. Okay, thank you so much. And I look forward to mm -hmm. hearing to the other delegations. Thank you. All right, Councilor Daniel. I do have a question for Mr. Jeffries. Is that okay now, or would that be another time? No, go ahead. Uh, just a question on the five points of uh, entry to North Talbot. It's a concern of mine, and uh, you can explain it to me, because it'd be a traffic issue. Obviously, North Talbot already has enough traffic, and uh, I know it's a key spot for the OPP for traffic enforcement. Um, is, is there any concerns that you have with you know having five roads popping out onto North Talbot now? instead of one or two, you know, and condense that? Mr. Jeffries. Three, three, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for that question. I know uh, there's been some concern shared about that. Um, I guess firstly, the, the traffic study that was completed for this development has indicated that there are no operational issues with respect to those five access points. Um, it's, in, in our opinion, these five access points are the, so the lesser of three options or sort of the better of three options that um, we could have designed or uh, the uh, proponent could have designed into the plan of subdivision. Um, and those other options include having double frontage or having the rear yards along North Talbot Road, which can result in a very unattractive um, uh, aesthetic for a subdivision. You, you end up with a, a fence that goes along the entire uh, stretch of the property, um, sort of turning the developments back to the community. Um, so it's not from an urban design perspective, we don't like to see that type of scenario. Uh, the other option would be to run a parallel road to North Talbot Road uh, and have two tiers with one tier fronting on North Talbot, which would result in you know, between 19 to 25 uh, lots fronting on North Talbot and having access to, to front Talbot Road. So uh, the five access points was thought to be the, the, the best solution to the design of the subdivision. Um, and it's no different from uh, many existing neighborhoods uh, throughout the community. If you, you know, uh, think of any, any of the neighborhoods um, in this area, and you'll see that there are uh, narrow blocks with access to sort of roads that act as a, sort of a collector, um, and they function just fine. So yeah, we're, we're not concerned with that, uh, that design feature at all. Thank you very much. Any further questions or, or, or comments before uh, we move this on to the other delegations? Uh, the, the only comment I've made, and I'm glad you made it, uh, Mr. Jeffries, uh, about the houses facing North Talbot. Uh, a good example of what, uh, what, what it can look like is just go down 42 and where the old racetrack, where they've got the back of the houses onto 42, and then you've got all a mix of different fences and and shrub you know shrubbery and so forth that really not very attractive and, and uh, so this makes it far more attractive um, by, by doing it that way so i'm glad to see that okay if there are no further questions then i, I i'll uh, move on to uh mr ian uh, bristow who's a resident uh of uh the region or or of the town Mr. 
I don't believe Mr. Bristol is logged in, Your Worship. Okay, well then we'll hold uh, we'll hold that that spot uh, and uh, a little bit later. And that, then I'll go right to uh, Judy Robson, a resident uh, of Old Castle. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, hope you're enjoying this nice weather. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Habib. You really warm my heart, uh, especially with your words, beautiful old castle, uh, because the residents here are passionate uh, about old castle, our settlement area. And uh, we really look forward to building a balanced community that will sustain the people that live here and the former Sandwich South area, which is in, as you know, in the south of Tecumseh. So I'd like to uh, start off very quickly and I tend to uh, talk too much. So I'm trying very hard to limit what I say. Uh, but the first thing I want you to know is that that uh, truly support uh, this. Even though we may have some concerns, we truly support your subdivision and look forward to uh, watching this plan uh, visually come into effect. So even though I say some concerns, it's not in opposition. It's just that from the community of people who have lived here for a long time, my concerns basically are two safety for the people that live here. And number two, that this is the built environment that you're doing enhances the social environment of our historical community. So anything I question or ask, that's what it's about. But first I wanna tell you what I love, um, the incorporation of the green space. And I know that's to both you and our planning department um, with Weston Park right there, with the trail that you're implementing, with um, the Chrysler Greenway not too far away and with the Hopefully in long term, the abandoned railroad track, maybe one day could be a, a, a trail. Um, it, it's a lot of green space that really gives a people a sense of pride. And, and I love that. Your, of course, your multi-use trail um, is it fits in with the rest of Old Castle, which is the center of the trails, the Chrysler, the start, I should say, of the Chrysler Greenway. Um, I love the stormwater uh, pond, management pond, probably for different reasons, uh, because I see in the future that it could be an aqua vista or something, you know, that uh, would again enhance the community. I love the fact that the housing is diversified. Uh, a lot of us in, in this area are seniors and we own quite a large property and uh, I've already had some talk to me and, and who want to stay in the community and uh, the fact that you have diversified housing, which means that the seniors can um, downsize and uh, yet stay in the community is a real plus. However, I do have some concerns about the, the safety and uh, uh, Councillor Tony, he already touched on it, uh, but I'd like to maybe elaborate it on a little uh, more. And the first is probably more for the town than, than for you. And uh, it is the traffic load on North Talbot Road, North, the design of North Talbot Road itself. North Talbot Road is basically a very rural country road. It is not the same quality when you go uh, east of the Old Castle Road on North Talbot compared to west. If you go west, you have bike lanes, you have a wider, it's actually wider. It's considered, I think, a commercial road. When you go east towards the western park of Old Castle Road, it, it narrows, uh, it resembles more of a country road. There are no, at the present, uh, bike lanes going to the park and um, it carries a very diversified type of traffic. You have heavy traffic in the morning, heavy traffic in the evening, all at peak hours. The traffic is also very, uh, different. You have commercial vehicles using the road, you have your com commuters in uh, cars, you have farm equipment 
coming down that narrow small road. And what is the concern of most of the people already living there is your bus. It's a very busy bus route. You have uh, buses from Vista, you have buses from St. Mary's, you have buses from Villanova, you have all these different school buses coming down uh, this road. Uh, and um, as Mr. Jeffrey already knows, that road is kind of poorly designed. You have a blind spot at the ninth. When you hit the ninth, there is a stop sign, but you also have people coming off uh, 46 uh, onto the ninth, coming around that curve. It, it's for the children who are getting on the bus. It, they already know it's a very dangerous situation. Uh, when you hit the other end, uh, you have a misalignment between the old Castle Road and the 8th Concession, which makes it uh, very hazardous uh, because when you're sitting at that intersection, you're watching for pedestrians, um, bike, bike, people are biking. You're trying to see people from the eighth coming down the road. And then you're trying to see people coming uh, west and east down North Talbot. So, uh, and it's heavily, heavily used. So the road itself, in my opinion, uh, and this again is more for the town, is designed poorly. And I guess the question uh, I have on this is, does the town have plans uh, for re-engineering the road, for um, possibly widening the road? And um, so just North Talbot itself, is it in the infrastructure budget to do something in the near future uh, for North Talbot. So that's one of my questions there on North Talbot itself. Uh, my second concern for safety is the multi-interior roads. Um, and do they support the concept of a livable neighborhood? In the very first concept plan, there was only four uh, roads coming out onto North Talbot, not five. I also want to point out, um, uh, Mr. Jeffries, that the distance looks a little bit um, longer than it actually is. It's less than a kilometer from the last residence, uh, which is, uh, let's say, the Washbrook drain area, all the way to um, the eighth concession. It's less than a kilometer. So you have five roads coming out over a multi-trail, I think, okay? the multi they would be. So you have a lot of impact points between pedestrians, people walking, and people coming out on the road. Now, I did look at uh, the Banwell Road, for example, and you're right, that situation occurs not in such a small area though, it's, and not onto, that type of road. As you know, um, between Tecumseh uh, going north on Banwell, that is um, a beautiful road. It's, I think, four lanes, easy for people to uh, merge out of. But we're looking at a narrow North Talbot that people have to come out. So imagine yourself sitting peak traffic time on one of these interior roads trying to get out onto North Talbot. Now, what are you looking for is your timing. Your timing has to be, as a senior, perfect. You have to be watching every car that's on one of the, those roads. You have to be watching the traffic on North Talbot, and then you have to be watching your pedestrians uh, walking and using the multiple trail. And that occurs five times. And it just seems a little bit too much in terms of safety that there are that many points of conflict. I don't know how to say it, where, where they all come together and that people trying to time and merge out into traffic on a very narrow road where a bus, school bus might be, a farm, a large farm uh, implement might be there on the road. It's a different situation than some of the, the roads in Tecumseh. And so I'd like to just point that out. I'd also 
the load, all the load is going toward North Talbot. All the traffic is coming out of North Talbot. And quite frankly, a lot of the drivers will be interested going into the city of Windsor using the eighth at the light and then turning left would be a safer um, exit out of that plan of subdivision. Now, I agree, you don't wanna cut into your berm, but I looked at the town of LaSalle and even in the town of Tecumseh, it is not unusual to have a street that goes through the commercial district. So street A, for example, I think it is, that could you, uh, is it possible that you have a side straight coming out the eighth, not cutting through the berm, but coming into the um, commercial area alongside the commercial. So that's correct, that the street would, street A would curve going uh, west onto the eighth leaving some of the load from the north, allowing people then instead of coming out of say street B, making a right, then making another right to get to the light, it would allow them to go right on to the eighth, make a right, and there they are at a stoplight. And instead of going through the berm, you would be going through the commercial area. Now the parking lot of your commercial area could have one of the exits going right onto the street. And that's not uncommon. For example, the Home Depot in uh, LaSalle has two exits in their commercial area going out onto the street they front. But they also have a street that um, is a public or uh, through a, an actual street that you can go right out to as well from the parking lot. Uh, so that's another question I have. Could you probably reduce uh, the number of streets like to the original concept plan to four and put one of the streets going through the commercial onto the eighth? It just seems I'm not a trying to be a traffic expert, only based on a resident who has often tried to get uh, out of um, Old Castle Road onto the North Talbot and knows exactly what it's like. And as a bike rider, uh, the safety of that road. So this is more, I know, uh, um, a little different, but I, I'm just um, wondering how the, that would be a more, if possible, a, a safer approach for the people that actually live there and actually a, a quicker and more direct out of that subdivision. So that seems to um, be a little, a little bit of concern. The next is more um, wanting it to be a place of uh, that people feel it's their place and a pride in place. And it comes when I look at this particular plan in terms of density. I know the importance of density. I um, know that uh, that is what's required right now, especially to save farmland. But there's a difference between density and crowding. And um, I'm just fearful by the narrow lots, and you can address that, that if you don't give a feeling of space and create a, a crowded feeling, then eventually um, it, it, the, the health, the mental health of the people is uh, something I, I question. And comparing different developers, I, I noticed that each has a different concept of what density is. And as you know, there's a lots of um, development in the town of LaSalle and they are very dense, but they give a sense of space. Um, for example, density could be created by putting apartments above these commercial buildings. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you have row houses here or not, but there are ways to create density without 
making people feel crowded. And I compare it to a subdivision on North Talbot, which is west of uh, Walker Road. And if you go into this uh, Northwood Lakes in some areas, it's not just density that's a problem, it's a sense of being too crowded, narrow streets on, and I'm glad to hear there are sidewalks, uh, but that's another concern is that, not that it's dense, that you're achieving density, but that it gives a sense of being crowded. And uh, that's a kind of, uh, a concern. I understand, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey, that there are sidewalks. That is correct, because in the drawing, I, I couldn't see them. And um, I understand that the trail will loop right around, basically. Is that correct? Is that, does it loop right around? Mr. Mayor, through you, if I, if I may, it, it, the, the trail will loop around. Uh, and there will be sidewalks on both sides of the road. That's the town standard. And these are things that we negotiate through the development agreement and secure through the development agreement. Okay. Um, thank you very much. So uh, those are just some of, you know, some of the concerns. I don't want to go on. I've gone on enough. And uh, I have submitted uh, some ideas and thoughts on that. So uh, welcome to Old Castle. Uh, again, they're not meant to be... Um, objections in any way. It's just some concerns for the safety and um, for, to make it a very livable and I'm sure you will. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take into consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Robson. Uh, and uh, yes, we, we are in receipt of your, uh, your submission. Okay, uh, is Mr. Bristow um, on? I uh, know your worship. He hasn't joined us this evening. Okay. Okay. So we have no further delegations. Um, we uh, have, excuse yep. me, your worship. Um, uh, Tiziano Zaghi, I was expecting, I'm, I'm the primary presenter for the <laughs> Is there anything you want to add? Yeah, um, I, I could certainly add some information and provide some insight. Uh, also, now that I've heard uh, the uh, comments by um, by Judy, uh, I can I can provide some information on that also. Um, before I start my presentation, though, when when Abdul was talking, and this sort of ties in with Judy's comments and also uh, Councillor Jobin, um, we've provided. Um, six photos of the various types of residential uh, homes that um, Habib's company is involved in building. You know, that, that he could be, you know, these are homes that are looking at single detached homes um, for the lots that are being proposed. Uh, there was mentioned the minimum of, of 50 foot lots and a lot of the lots are, are larger than 50 feet also. So that's just the minimum. So this just gives you the range of the quality of homes um, that we're looking at for this subdivision. And these are the single detached ones. As you can see, um, some of them also have two door garages, uh, which is uh, certainly a, a, an element. Uh, so here you see the, again, the homes uh, that, that would be proposed. Oh, nice. uh, that's a semi-detached. And that's an example of, of uh, a semi-detached also with two-door garages, which is sort of a ranch style semi-detached home. So I just wanted to bring those up because they, they were submitted uh, just to give you an idea of the, the types of homes that Abdul is considering for, for the subdivision. Uh, can I make a brief presentation? Sure. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Your Worship and members of council and administration. Uh, as noted, my name is Tiziano Zag. I'm the planner representing uh, the applicant, Abdul Abib. Uh, we are in support of planning staff's recommendation that the draft plan of subdivision approval be supported by town council. Um, for background, I'll try not to duplicate what Chad did. He did a very comprehensive review of the application, but I think it's important to emphasize um, the basis of, of this whole planning exercise, 
uh, derives from the uh, local planning appeal tribunal, which, which is LPAT, the decision that they made, and they were formerly the OMB. The land use policies and zoning required for these subject, uh, for these specific lands are site specific. They were designed specifically for this property. Uh, they were defined by LPAT and approved by town council, forming part of the town's official plan and zoning bylaw. The proposed subdivision is in conformance with the official plan policies and the zoning bylaw requirements. There are no amendments have been requested or required for this draft plan of subdivision. To synthesize, there are identified four key components of the draft plan. And some of these will also tie in very closely with, with Judy's comments. Uh, there are residential land use, traffic, multi-use path, and the green buffer area. As mentioned, the proposed subdivision provides a mix of low density residential uses consisting of single detached, semi-detached, and townhouse dwellings. 60% of the total dwellings are single detached. That represents approximately 72% of the land area that's dedicated in the subdivision for residential use. The overall density for the combined residential dwellings that includes the singles, the semi-detached and the townhomes is 10.95 units per gross hectare. And this is well below the maximum gross uh, density allocation that's established by LPAT and included in the official plan policies. So we're well below into the low density area. With respect to road network and traffic, uh, the neighborhood would be served as mentioned by a local road network forming a residential grid pattern. The roads will be of urban design in accordance with the town standards and will include features such as sidewalks and tree plantings. The road right of way width is 20 meters. This is the standard width for local urban roads throughout the province, not just the town of Tecumseh. Five access points, as mentioned, are along the North Talbot Road. There are no individual lots that are fronting off the North Talbot Road, and this was done for safety reasons. There's no access road uh, proposed on the 8th Concession Road in order to be consistent with the LPAT decision and maintain the integrity of the green buffer area. In other words, when LPAT decided the, the green buffer area, and I'll talk to that separately, but I'll bring it up now. It was a very important component which allowed the residential development to go ahead. What it basically formed was a distance separation of buffer between the light industrial uses to the west and the proposed residential to the west, uh, to the east, sorry. The LPAT chairperson was very careful to indicate that it had to be a contiguous strip consisting of the commercial block at the corner and then a 70 meter buffer from the commercial area to the edge of the property to the north. It had to be contiguous. The concern I have with is in order to meet that and be consistent with that decision, there should be no intrusion such as a road cutting through there because that interferes with the separation in terms of the berming and in terms of separating the uses of the industrial and the residential. It's sort of like having a dike and then all of a sudden saying, well, listen, we'll just put a small opening in it. Once the dike's open, then you've got potential impacts resulting from the commercial, from the industrial uses onto the residential. That's why it was supposed to be a contiguous buffer area. So um, that's why no road goes through that particular area. I should also mention with respect to the five access points, uh, part of the design was because it's a grid pattern. It basically splits traffic evenly throughout the neighborhood. So each car has an opportunity to get out and it doesn't condense the traffic coming out. A traffic study was repaired and both safety and traffic generation from the proposed subdivision was looked at. It was determined that the proposed roads, the five roads there were indeed safe and met the acceptable levels for the road, uh, for the road network and also view lines along North Talbot Road. 
and it wouldn't cause any, any negative impacts on the surrounding road network. Um, I recognize Judy's comments. Um, some of the issues related to the North Talbot Road are really external to the subdivision uh, by describing them. And so those are issues that may have to be looked at separately outside of the subdivision itself. Um, the multi-use path is another important component. It's a three meter multi-use path, which is proposed adjacent to North Talbot Road, eighth concession, and along the Northern portion of the subdivision which connects eight concession to Weston Park. The design of the multi-use path was sort of based in, was, was based on three components. One, safety. Uh, the, the paths are designed to be adjacent to roads. And the reason for that was to, one, to increase visibility and the safety of the users, both pedestrians and bike users, and then utilize the street lighting to illuminate uh, the paths during the evening. Secondly, it had to be a community friendly design. In other words, the path provides easy access to the residents and linkages to existing and future paths and Western Park. Thirdly, it had to be a friendly environment, uh, friendly and environmentally friendly design, sorry. And by doing that, it does not, we, we try to keep the trail away from intruding on and we're impacting on uh, endangered species areas and their habitat. And there are endangered species and habitat area located <coughs> along the, uh, the drain, uh, which is the West Book drain along the Eastern boundary. And um, initially there was a concept which showed it going right along the drain but as mentioned, there's environmentally sensitive areas, there are buffer areas and uh, endangered species uh, potential also. So that's why it was not put along that drain area. But as mentioned by, by Mr. Jeffries, um, we could certainly look at the option of still looping it, but trying to utilize the road as much as possible. So that would also make it a safe route without impacting the environmental area. So that's something to discuss later and, and incorporate into the development agreement with the town. Um, the final section is that green buffer area. And I've already talked to it briefly and it was an important component uh, that ran along the 8th concession road. Um, it's shown as block 161 on the plan. And again, the importance there, I think, is to maintain the integrity of that area, not to chop it up, because then you have the potential of, of impacts intruding into the residential area from the industri light industrial uses to the, to the west. Uh, that concludes my presentation, and I'm available for, for any questions. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Zaghi, uh, uh, for your uh, presentation. Um, any questions? Uh, yes, Deputy Mayor Bicchetti. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Could we get the map put back on just for illustration purposes? The one that shows the, uh, the, the, that one there. Thank you. Um, maybe Mr. Habib, again, thank you for, for this. I think we've come a long way. We've been looking at developing this parcel for as long as I've been on council over 20 years. And, and, and finally, you know, we're at the point now where we're actually seeing a plan before us that, uh, you know, I call it a win-win. You know, it, it, it's, you know, it's something that uh, the community will, will receive. Uh, Housing, we're always looking for housing and, and you build beautiful homes, not only here in Windsor, uh, throughout the county. So very Thank reputable uh, developer and we're happy to have you here to do some work in Tecumseh and hopefully you'll do more, you know, in the future. We've got lots of land. Um, Thank you. Just a question, the one that comes out to mind, and I, again, I'm not a planner, maybe the planner can help. Uh, when I look at this, I look at Street F. Uh, you know, if I'm buying a lot, I don't want to see uh, a car coming at me. Uh, those two parcels of property that exiting F, you're going to get the headlights. I'm wondering, you know, was there consideration where you can line up 
uh, H with F. And, and, and also if you look at, um, maybe make the map a little bit smaller just to kind of see the other one. Um, you know, moving the lots over, again, there could be a reason for that. But the other thing, the, you know, Councillor Tonio mentioned the five exits, and I know the planner addressed it, but why couldn't Street A encompass and go all the way around so that it's almost like on, on the exterior? So it's another more buffer from North Talbot. Um, and again, you would lose those lots on the side, but you could have a couple exits um, if you made Street A make a big circle all the way around. And, and, and so there, then when you do come out, uh, you're not really hitting the headlights. So to me, it's a pet peeve. I, I always get complaints of people when they buy the homes, they get those street lights, headlights coming at them. But just wondering your perspective on the planning side. Again, I'm not a planner, so I'm just throwing this out. Just an observation when I saw the plan. Let's leave it to take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, can, I can speak to the, the, the crossroad there. Maybe we could bring up the, uh, the plan again. So we can take a look at it. Yeah, Street F, the reason it was put in uh, through discussions with planning staff, um, I think originally there, there was, we had done a design with no Street F at all. You know, it just had sort of a block going through. But the city indicated, uh, or the town planning staff, I think indicated at the time, that they had certain, they, they had an issue that the blocks were getting too long. You know, there were too many residential units. So we would sort of uh, put the street through there to split, split those blocks uh, in, in, you know, approximately half. And that's the reason it's there. Um, I think your suggestion was maybe um, bring that street F down to where H is, where that cul-de-sac is, right through yes. there. Right. Um, that, that, you know, that, that certainly is, is something, uh, you know, we can discuss with planning and, and see if we can, uh, uh, that could probably be done without losing the lots, uh, because of the road right away a width, you know, you're just shifting the road further to the south. Yeah. It, it makes the three lots more sellable. Like you out of the three, you're going to have you know, well, one, two, yeah, you're gonna have three, some lots you're gonna with, have maybe one. So that's yeah, two more lots that are more through, desirable. Yeah. So, um, we, you know, we're prepared to, to look at that. You know, that's not a major, what I consider a, a major change um, that we could, we could work with, uh, with planning staff, the town's planning staff and, and the county and, and adjust that accordingly. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Jeffries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to add to that. The, the reason we asked for the blocks to be broken up is because there's an ideal block length and that's between 600 and 800 maximum. Uh, and the reason for that is the longer the block length without connectivity, the less walkable a neighborhood is. So we asked them to go back to the drawing board and see if they could reduce some of the block sizes. And they got those two down to what was considered uh, acceptable from an urban design perspective. Um, but the, the ones to the west fell within that, that uh, ideal range. So um, that's why that only goes, the street F only goes through two blocks. But it was primarily to break up the block length and to enhance the walkability of the neighborhood. Councilor Jobin. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Zaghi, for your presentation. Um, Thanks for the visuals as well. It's helpful. Um, so I understand uh, in your definition or your description of how road A can't go to concession eight, it's basically to funnel residential to the North Talbot and, and give the concession eight primarily to the industrial. Is that, is that what you're saying? You want to funnel them? So there is no way that you would consider road yeah. A going on to eight at all? Right. Um, when, when the, the buffer area, it, it, there's two parts of it. You've got the green buffer area and the commercial block. And when, uh, when it was at the board, uh, the board decided that a certain distance separation and also the green buffer area consists of three components. It consists of the multi-use path, which we moved along the road 
for, for reasons I mentioned before, for safety, right? And then there is the middle part, which was uh, a swale, okay, which is could be incorporated into the stormwater management facility. But also, most importantly, there's a landscaped berm. Uh, you know, and the berm is located very close to the road, right? And the idea of the berm is just not a visual separation. There's two parts. There's the distance separation of 70 meters is the minimum distance of that, of that buff area. And the berm also acts as a, a retardant from potential noise, right? So you've got that, that distance separation and also the berm effect. And the concern is that it had to be contiguous through that. And um, there will also be fences on the rear yard, um, you know, but those would be the individual ones for, for the lots. And the concern was is putting a road through there would ruin the integrity of, of the function of that berm area to protect the residential areas. It wasn't really a traffic related issue. Okay. Does that, does that explain that. it? Or? It does, yes, thank you. And thank you both and welcome. Um, just one more thing for Chad. Chad, it's just, we're holding this, it's primarily for a county purpose. And typically I don't see a county member here. Well, I mean, we have our board members but and the warden, but I mean, a county engineer, a county planner. So this information gets conveyed or basically we just receive the report, it goes to them, they review and approve that kind of thing. They don't typically engage in this. They don't customarily attend through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, attend the public meetings. Uh, there are seven lower tier municipalities. That would be an awful lot of public meetings for the county planner to attend. Um, however, sometimes uh, I know that she does uh, listen in on these uh, and they're recorded so she can hear the comments that her, uh, when it's convenient for her to do that. Um, but yeah, we forward everything that we hear tonight in terms of the, the main minutes to the county along with the planning reports and any accompanying Know, studies, uh, they all get forward to, to her for her uh, review of, the, of the, the plan at the county level. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and uh, just to uh, um, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, McKetty's comments about shifting the roads and so forth. So if you put a road through the berm, now you're gonna affect another house. Uh, so instead of having one, you'll have to deal with the light issue on, uh, on, on the next one uh, as well. So. Um, so we're trying to deal for something on road F and, and then we're, we're creating another issue uh, if, if we make that uh, allocation. Uh, Councilor Houston. Uh, th thank you, Your Worship. And, and through you, maybe to uh, Chad, if, if uh, the breakup uh, of the blocks is for walkability, um, if it's not a roadway, could a larger sidewalk or um, you know, something like that, uh, you know, a small trail work and we're kind of eliminating the, the whole light issue. I just, uh, just a thought. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to Council Houston, uh, that's been done. We, we see it right here in uh, the former St. Clair Beach area where we have pathways that extend between blocks. Uh, it works, but they have to be de designed properly. Um, so there's the walkability component, but then there's also the traffic dispersion component. Um, if you, you know, the more connectivity you have, the more options for traffic to move through a neighborhood, the less it relies on one particular street to do that. So it, it, it is a possibility, um, but they have to be, to be designed well um, so that there's not this tunnel effect, which can result in other problems from a you know, septet or crime prevention through environmental design perspective. All right, uh, I see uh, Zach Abib's hand is up. Uh, is there something yeah, you thank you. Add? I just wanted to comment, please, over uh, Deputy Mayor McKay's comments. Uh, I agree, I have that pet peeve as well with street apps. So one of the ways we see we try to alleviate that is by having the lot line centered right in the middle of street apps. And then what we do is we would have the garages on that side of the lot line. So as the vehicles are returning left and right, their headlights would fall more on the garages, not so much on the, the living room windows. Good point. That's it. Thank you, Council. Okay, any further questions or comments? 
All right, to our delegation, I, I certainly want to thank you and, and uh, personally, Mr. Habib and, and uh, Mrs. Aggie and, and uh, both the Habibs. I want to thank you for, um, for your, uh, for looking at Tecumseh as a great place to, uh, to invest. And, and uh, there's no doubt uh, the diversity of your housing, um, I can tell you is, uh, it's welcoming. Uh, I can tell you single family homes are great uh, but uh, the baby boomers are saying, um, you know, we're looking at something different. And I can attest to that because I'm one of them. And uh, I lived in a fairly new subdivision that is uh, townhomes. And uh, I remember the developer at the time uh, said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I can sell this in three years. And uh, in less than 12 months, it was sold out 48 units. So there is a demand. There is no question. And uh, the beauty of it too is, a lot of our seniors can stay within uh, within their their neighborhoods or or, or certainly uh, in their community. So, and and I have seen some of your products. I know on Banwell here and in, in especially in uh, the East Town uh, planning area of the city, you build a beautiful home. And, and uh, so we're looking forward to uh, uh, building that relationship with you. And I want to just echo Deputy Mayor Bicchetti's. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, other opportunities coming up. So. Uh, stay tuned for that. So thank you for, uh, again, choosing to come see. And uh, uh, this is a, a, um, quite, a, quite a development. And uh, I must say, I think this is the only, this is the second greenfield development uh, we've had in, in many years. We've had infills. Uh, we've had, uh, 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 you know, projects. Uh, the last one was Lakewood, uh, the, the uh, Lakewood uh, Park. Uh, development and go beyond that, it goes to uh, the Revland phase three development, which is uh, uh, 20 years ago. So um, thank you for choosing to come see. Thank you very much, sir. We'll look forward to see you. Thank you very much. So no further questions or comments, then uh, we can uh, deal with the communication pieces, members of uh, council, uh, there's two of them, uh, and uh, a motion to receive communications one and two. Councilor Tonio and Councilor Ottenhoff. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. And then uh, we have uh, the report of the uh, PBS 2021 50 draft plan subdivision approval, Old Castle Heights, Inc., uh, County of Essex, and that's file 37 T 21004, northeast corner of the eighth concession, North Talbot Road. And so I need a motion to support that the granting of the draft plan subdivision approval by the County of Essex, the approval authority for the application file by Old Castle Heights in Inc. County of Essex file number uh, 37T21004 for a residential subdivision consisting of a total of 157 blocks uh, slash lots, which are identified for 132 detached dwellings units, 12 semi-detached units, six semi-detached dwellings, 76 townhome dwellings, and 17 four-unit townhouse dwellings, and 10 purpose pathways, stormwater corridors, uh, and blocks identified to buffer areas and passive open space, multi-purpose pathway, stormwater corridors, and a stormwater pond on a 20.7 hectare, 51.3 acre parcel of land described as part lot 11, concession eight, situated on the northeast corner, of North Talbot Road, 8th Concession Road intersection, subject to the inclusion of appropriate conditions as noted in PBS 2021-50 uh, uh, be supported. And that the County of Essex be advised of council support of County uh, of Essex file number 37T21004 along with the associated requested conditions of draft plan approval. Moved by Deputy Mayor Ricchetti, Council Jobin support. No further questions or comments, all in favor? Opposed, if any, uh, that's carried unanimous. No further, uh, no further business and adjournment is certainly in order, members of council. Uh, Councilor Tonio, Councilor Altenhoff, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Okay. So do we sign off and move?